Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. We're going to talk to a second filmmaker here in a second who uh, put a release in for the InfoWars.com forward slash Paul Revere contest. You can find all the videos up there. Uh, not, not the entire list, but about 300 of, of, of the ones that we thought um, made it into that first kind of um, category or round of just really good, solid films. Uh, InfoWars.com forward slash Paul has those there. We will have a full list on Planet InfoWars coming up, and there will be a link to that site there. We're getting those together. There really were a ton of films. People sent them in. <laughs> and we're, at, what we're trying to do now is go through and figure out which ones were double submissions, because we had some people submit their film twice. Um, some people submitted three or four times. Some people submitted multi-films. So we've got to make sure we got one of each in there and ready to go in that big composite list of all of them. But with that, we're going to go to this next one. It is called Statomasochist and the Wheel. And we're going to watch just maybe a, a couple minutes of it, and then we're going to have the director, Micah Ellers, on with us. So let's check it out. This one's going to blow your mind, I think. Time to be even more productive. And where's my boy's salutation? Good morning. Mm -hmm. I love you. Oh, that's, that's my boy. handsome boy. I've noticed you haven't really been eating or drinking much lately. Don't you want to grow up big and strong like your neighbors? How else are you going to get your fluoride and additives? I'm worried about your health. Everyone should eat extra, extra healthy today. Because the Horn Queen Harlot is planning another attack. We thought we had her finished off. But as you can see, we are all still breathing the smoke from the burning remnants of her arson. She would destroy us all if she could. She hates us for our freedoms. We must all give everything we have before we no longer have the privilege to. We will do everything we can to keep the momentum going because we love you and everyone will be remembered for their efforts when we live in a better time. So, Paul, what is bothering you exactly? I had another nightmare. This one was more, more clear than the last. Oh, I see. What oh, no one these. Go ahead. I dreamed that the Horn Queen was being beaten to death. That's a good dream. And a wet one for me. She was young and innocent and her torch didn't burn fires, but it but it gave light and I wanted to help her. Hmm. Sounds like you might be developing a delusion. Be careful thinking that way. I feel like I just need to rest. I need, I, I need to rest and think for myself. Rest? Don't be absurd. Then others won't be able to eat or drink. We're all sharing the burden here. Besides, you know what happens the moment you try and stop walking. It's just a fact of life. The 
wheel must keep turning, Paul. I feel like something's wrong. Something's, even with the, the food and the, and the water, everything's, everything's so disappointing in a weird way. You're becoming anxious and depressed. You just need an SSRI. I feel like something's wrong, even with those, I... Even worse, a paranoid delusion. You need several SSRIs. What's happening, God? What's wrong with me? And that was an excerpt of State O Masochist and the Wheel, and it was done by Micah Ellers. And we now have him live via Skype here in the InfoWars Central Command Center Studios for Nightly News. Micah, how are you doing today? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. How are Great. How are you? I'm doing great. And it, was, it was really cool watching your film. I think it's got a lot of intense imagery in it. Reminds me of, of a cross kind of between Brazil and Time Bandits. Um, you know, two, two pretty powerful Terry Gilliam picks. That, especially Time Bandits, is seared into my, my brain as a kid watching it on HBO over and over and over again. But just that good versus evil battle that's going on. And it's always, you know, one individual that just kind of stands up and says, wait a minute, this isn't right. You know, why am I going along with all this stuff going on? So what, what was your impetus behind this? How'd you get started? How'd you recruit all the people to be in it? Um, just tell us your, uh, you know, your trials and tribulations. Sure. Well, what you just said about Terry Gilliam was kind of the reason I did it. I think about four or five weeks into the contest, I was listening to your radio broadcast, and Alex came on and said something about, he was really looking for like the next Terry Gilliam type filmmaker or somebody that can make like a theatrical type movie that would be like a Brazil. And I, I think he's talking to me. <laughs> and uh, so I decided to cancel a bunch of projects and I do devoted I gaining seven weeks or so that was left uh, to getting that done, which we barely did. And I think we made about seven minutes or something crazy like that. Um, so yeah, the Terry Gilliam was a big part part of it, at least when he uh, mentioned that. And I know he had mentioned Ridley Scott and uh, Stanley Kubrick being favorites of his before, and the need for someone to make like more entertainment type uh, or th powerful theatrical film, um, so, uh, promoting the you know, liber libertarian type view. And um, so I thought, I got to take a shot at this. I, I want to do this anyway. So, and then the crew, um, I used so many different crews because I do commercial uh, film production direction um, anyway, so I kind of uh, just networked around. I used one of the universities for a couple of interns too, and just did everything we could to get a, a volunteer crew for most of it. What was was the lady um, in the TV excited. the uh, the overseer who was on the TV? Was she uh, an actress or was she just somebody you found that you thought would fit the part? I think she did a great job, by the way. She was perfectly uh, uh, stato masochist, as you as you put it. That was actually me. What? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> Put that picture up again. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. I just yeah. got my head, I had a wig on. Yeah, that was totally me. I thank you. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I never tell anyone. Wow. That, but yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> well, you got the mannerisms down pat of, of the the <laughs> government bureaucrat minder who who yeah. is just totally nitpicking everything and oh you're. You're not thinking clearly. Here's a pill. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant job. You, you deserve an Academy Award for that. <laughs> Thank you. I, I was in any state I guess I was going for, so. Yeah. No, well, that, she definitely fulfilled the role, and, and now we know that, that she was a he. That, I think that's what made it more, as I'm sitting there watching that, I'm like, wow, that is just a, an evil person up there. Just See, I, <laughs> yeah, well, I I thought it would make I was like, what's the uncanny valley that's going to make people feel there's something really off about this character? And I was like, I'll make it a guy. You know, and then that kind of gives it like a, a unisex, you know, like, because I feel like that's how it always is, right? It's always this more generic, more generic version of or something, right? And so I felt like that was, and that's why the color, the face changes colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you have that, that effect in the background, that 80s type of... Uh... <laughs> Yeah. of uh, repeating effect going on back there and and in then the, in the skin on her huh? oh sorry yeah yeah go uh, well I, and uh, another thing we're watching some clips of it now i like the hands that are there to help you you got the right hand and the left hand each helping you that's a great metaphor um did, did that was that something you shot practical and just yes 
Okay, yes. so you just put the, the actresses in black tights or something, or how did that work? What, well, actually, they were wearing um, greets entirely, and we built um, cables in a shoulder piece, and then I had to uh, paint them all out in post. Like, their whole body's in on all the shots be completely removed uh, in post. Oh, wow. Okay, so it took you a lot of post-production then to get this... <sighs> get these shots it was a nightmare we yeah i was like it was like a, me and myself and another assistant for the compositing we spent 37 hours straight without sleeping just to get it in on time with the deadline you know we had to cut a lot of corners to make that deadline but i, I didn't want the story to suffer you know right but and yeah. it doesn't at the end of this you know i don't want to spoil it for anybody but <laughs> but paul is his name right paul which i guess is paul, yeah, paul, paul, paul revere paul. Uh, you know, he does have an awakening, you know, he, he realizes something is wrong and he refuses to comply with the, the wheel that he has placed in, the, you know, the great hamster right. wheel. Right, yeah. Uh, but you start off with a really intense piece of imagery, that, <laughs> that uh, elephant donkey uh, dressed in uh -huh. the S&M gear whipping uh -huh. um, Lady Liberty, who's got, you know, uh, credit cards mm -hmm. to her, she's bound and gagged, mm -hmm. and I mean, yep. really intense imagery there. With the drones in the background, and uh, it just, uh, you know, that's almost like uh, a cutaway from uh, Lord of the Rings if it was, if it was done with, uh, in bondage. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Good stuff, though. You know, the slow motion whip, all, all the, you really have the, the craft down, and, and you could really tell that you had um, experience in doing this stuff. This wasn't your first rodeo putting something together. Uh, so I'm not surprised that you're doing commercials for a living and, and you know making a living off doing film. Thanks. Yeah, I try. Uh, I wanted to be a science fiction filmmaker, and um, you know, I, I, so I learned how to do all that stuff, uh, studio-based effects. I like I like in-camera effects. Everything in the film, there's no CGI. It's all practical. Um, I really like that, and I like with digital compositing technology, you can really do a lot. Kind of take off where film left off in the maybe early 90s or something like that, late 80s. Uh, right. And you've yeah. got, it looks like, uh, some stills behind you, um, some, some uh, slides that you made of the, some concept art for, the, for, the, for your oh. film. Oh, oh, in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah right behind uh, you. This is, yeah, there's concept art for the, you know, the state of Massey and the kills. And so we had to design everything first because, like, the, the, um, the creature was a whole, Old creature suit in the silicone. It was pretty expensive and time consuming. Uh, uh, DMS mascot, Dale Morton, did that from a local. He does special effects and mascot stuff. But we had to design it all. Like, that's Lady Liberty you can see down there. And uh, um, there's the scene with uh, the Trollatron character. So, you know, kind of started there conceptualizing everything. I kind of spent like days just uh, writing a script and then uh, myself and another artist began conceptualizing it and uh, just went full full bore like full time from then on you know to get it done yeah well it's got a lot of very yeah. unique imagery not you know of yours I think yeah. is the most probably original of what we got in you know a lot of people did really great, great jobs on editing pulling in different yeah. elements and stuff but yours really had a look to it that nobody else I think even came close to in terms of, of just like its own original look when you're when you put them all together yours just kind of you know stands out there's some other great ones too that, but yours is just a fully encompassing into another world that does not exist, but it does <laughs> if you yeah. if you yeah. look at things in, in a, a different light. If you just change the way the the prism is, you know, you just look at things just a little bit differently. It's like, wait a minute, we are all walking in a hamster wheel. Why are we all doing this? You know, why do we look at the right hand and left hand? Why, you know, one's got this, one's got that. It's but it's two fl two mm -hmm. flavors of poison. You know, one just tastes sweet and one tastes sour. So which, which one do we want at this time? So um, how long did it take you to write the whole piece out? Did you just take that from that seven-week time frame? Just Yeah, yeah. Actually, see, the thing is, I, uh, I was busy at first, and I wasn't going to do the contest and put myself out of it. And then when Alex said that thing, I immediately was like, you know what, tomorrow you're going to clear the schedule. You're going to going to sit down ouch, all day and I just thought what could I, I I mean it was totally from scratch there I was like what he said he wanted something Terry Gilly and I'd like to do something like that so I was like what can I create that'll be like this political allegorical world you know um and so I, I started writing concepts down and, and just um refined as much as I could in the script I mean you know sadly I wrote two drafts so the first draft I sat down and the set second day I spent the day writing the script and then I didn't touch the script again because of time. I was so concerned with all the time I and mean, when we had to 
build the set, gerbil wheel, everything had to be made, the characters, everything. Um, so I, I did a final rewrite. We, I got up at like 4.30 in the morning the day before we shot the first day of photography, and I, um, I wrote the script entirely there and changed it even more. And so, you know, it was the best I could do in like just a couple of days of, of writing on it. But um, I think the con concepts came, and I wanted to just create that world. And so I feel like, you know, it was fairly successful maybe in that way. Yeah. You know, given the budget and all those kind of things. Right, exactly. And you're not in a uh, production hotbed or what is known as a production hotbed. You're not in New York. You're not in L.A. You're not in Austin. Uh, tell people where you're at. You know, so I, and I want people to know that because yeah. you could do this anywhere. You don't have to be surrounded by all the glitz and glamour of you know the production world. Where, where, tell everybody where you're located. Yeah, well, I'm basically in Charleston, West Virginia. So I'm in like the filming pit of the country. I mean, there's like, this is the worst place you could probably be for this type of industry. So yeah, if you can succeed here, I'm, anyone with the resources and connections and infrastructure anywhere else, uh, you know, what's their excuse? Exactly. Right. And, and, and we were talking earlier as well, when, I, when you told me you're from West Virginia, I said, oh, well, you know, have you heard anything about this, this uh, Boy Scout Jamboree and all the emergency exercises that are going on? And then you had an interesting story. You were actually had a, had a job working with these people at one point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I've worked with them before, but for different uh, reasons. I've shot stuff, stuff for the merchandising part of the Boy Scouts and licensing, but uh, you know, little projects. But the um, the the, the thing was somebody called me to be a camera operator and uh, shoot, um, you know, just live live coverage, I guess, and the commercial coverage or whatever of the jamboree. And then um, luckily that canceled. So now I'm kind of creeped out. The whole you know internet. Um, the, uh, the what was it, the Facebook or something in Beckley that his article about that this morning with the the scares about the drills and then I read all that and I was like right. well, I'm really glad that yeah there's they there's a, that. you know there's a an, an order from the governor where he declared a state of emergency um, there's different exercises going on in the air I think four different um, emergency management systems yeah. are operating there during this time and they were going around to the restaurants in the local area saying if you have four or more people complaining, or it's either four or five or more people complaining about rashes or vomiting, contact us immediately. I mean, that on itself, oh is, that's goodness. just odd. That is just very odd that that well, kind of information would be coming out. Well, I can tell you they have, um, there's black helicopters flying around today, and army helicopters, there's all kinds of, this morning, there were probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 C-130s go up. I mean, I know they're doing drills in the report, too. It said, I live, I live right, I like the mouth from the airport so or two miles or something and so all day it's just been um, you know a uh, national guard uh, uh, display of, of all kinds of craft and it's, so some something's going on yeah and you know the boy scouts working with the national guard is nothing new in 2010 i was in chicago and all the local boy scout troops were pulled into this exercise that was being held in a uh, cordoned off section near uh, one of the airports and you know, they had Polish troops in there working with these guys, even though the Polish troops were supposed to be just observing. And I even got that a quote uh, from a high up Chicago emergency uh, management uh, official. He said, nope, nope, they're just there observing. Well, I've got footage of them holding guns, directing people around in this mock terrorist exercise where there's a chemical agent spread out with hostages. And the funny thing is, is, is when the uh, troops bust in, they kill the two terrorists with their guns. And then they tell everybody to lie down in the powder that was spread out, which was the biological agent, instead of moving them away. And they treated them like prisoners at that point. Then they're uh, run over to a decontamination area. They've got this powder on them. They have to get scrubbed down. But they were using the Boy Scouts in this capacity. And I think this is a group that they do turn to every once in a while to fulfill these things. We see... Um, uh, other agencies working with the Boy Scouts. The New York Times was reporting that Homeland Security is working with the Boy Scouts, teaching them how to go take out um, veterans or drug dealers and stuff like that. And they show them the Boy Scouts with guns, you know, running around um, buses and, and going through doors, doorways, and, and conducting these exercises. So they are kind of grooming these young men who, and, you know, I was a Boy Scout. We were told, you know, you dedicate yourself to service. You know, you're dedicating yourself to your community to make it a better place. You're prepared. You have all these things under control. You know how to do certain skills so you can be an asset in your community, not a liability. And what they're doing is taking that type of goodwill and that type of, you know, trustworthiness, loyalty, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, friendly, brave, clean, and reverent. I think I almost got it all right there. 
the uh, Boy Scout motto, or the not the motto, but the, one of the things. Anyway, I've been out of uh, out of it for a while. But those type of uh, philosophies, and they're directing it towards turning it into the police state. They're directing them into that that crowd because they know these guys are trustworthy in their in their abilities, and that by getting them early enough. You know, when these guys are going into a career, they're going, well, what do I want to be? Well, you know, I had a great time on all those exercises with the National Guard and the Coast Guard and the Army. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go help people out. And they, these are those Dudley Do-Rights out there that really think they are helping out when, you know, they're, they're digging in people's cars or digging in their pants or doing mm -hmm. blood draws. They really are getting them young, mm -hmm. and that's what Hitler said to do, get the kids when they're young. So we really are fulfilling that by, by you know, having the Boy Scouts participate in these programs. Yeah, well, they have to be uh, good at what they do, you know, in order to succeed up through the progression of that. So they it's for anyone to want them to work for them, you know. So it makes sense. I mean, you know, um, they, they, they like you said, all the all the attributes. Uh, I, I don't think I can name them off as quickly as you did, but um, <laughs> I think I great, got a few wrong you know, too. <laughs> somebody <laughs> will put a comment. You you got them wrong. It's this. Somebody will post it. But, uh, yeah, right, right. You know, hey, any, any, anything else you want to add on your film? Um, any final thoughts? Why you put it together? What you hope people get out of it when they're watching it? Yeah, sure. Um, the thing I hope people get, if anything, is just that um, the concept itself, I think, applies in so many different ways that, you, you know, we, we're, we wake up in that system and um, we don't question it when we don't question it. Uh, life continues on exactly as it's planned for us. But, um, if you'll notice that, you know, it's not actually even an act of violence in the film. To it, it's 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 an act of uh, secession in your mind or in your will in your action. You you realize that, that what you're doing is contributing in the way that he sees the bigger picture, you know, in the film, and um, how it's connected to the the to the very thing that you're you're taught to fear. And so once you realize you're kind of all we all participate in our own participate in that mentally, physically. So the, the, the way to be free of the farm is to see the farm, really. And, and when you see that in the mind, like through the propaganda and, and through the culture that we're, you know, we all get brainwashed to comply a certain way. Um, once, we, once we look and see the picture, we can then see all I have to do is, is stop participating in this. And I think that that's really the solution. At least all the beast lost its power. So, you know, I think that... Um, once one one cable of power at the time at a time, you know, as we as we all get off and it'll, uh, you know, and I'm not saying that like saying get off the grid. I mean, of course you can do that, and that's exactly a, a, a perfect example in in a you know very physical way. But um, even mentally, you know, um, the belief systems, the left and right hand, and you know, in thought and, and that the entire paradigm of uh, having someone else finish your thoughts for you and protect you, so on and so forth. Uh, the pharmaceutical the, drugging, the, the, freedom comes out of the fluoride yeah, in the water, yeah. all that stuff. It, just, yeah. it, all, it all combines to creating the individual who can be controlled. And that's what they want. They want individuals that can be controlled, that do what they say, that pay their taxes, that don't question. They just want people to run on that hamster wheel and keep it turning because by us turning that hamster wheel, it lets them sit around and do nothing but lord over us. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It, it's just we have a neo-feudalism, you know, instead of us being in the fields, we're in that hamster wheel. It's just, you know, it's different, but it's the same thing, and we're, it all works the, in the same way. So if people get that, that's great. There's other little, you know, subtle things in the film, too, but I, I don't want to give a lot of those away. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I hopefully my main purpose in making it, though, is I want to make a feature film, and I'd like to do something like this that could be, you know, maybe theatrically released that would be entertaining to people, because I feel like if you take the abstraction of it uh, like this film you know it's an abstraction and if you and if you can do that you can show people how it all works like um i think i think when you stick to the truth and when you stick to what's morally right the truth is on your side so all you have to do is is kind of generically show where people are missing the truth in their life you know missing uh, the facts and um uh, i'd like to do that with a film you know filmmaking and i kind of like to make kind of you know kubrick uh uh, Ridley Scott, Terry Gilliam type, uh, maybe, you know, films of this nature or, or, or more complicated, but hopefully with a lot bigger budget. Right, right. Well, you're, I think you're well on your way, and if people go check out your site, you even have some other special effects stuff that you've done, which I think is really impressive. It's stuff oh, that thanks. I, you know, I, I mainly spend my time shooting Alex on video and adding uh, articles and imagery over top of it. We don't spend a lot of time doing, you know, special effects heavy stuff. Every once in a while we do, but, but 
you know, it's a, it's a rarity. It's the exception more than the rule because we're just concentrating on putting out information that people can see, that people can share with their friends. But you did it in a way that I really think is going to wake people up in another way too, and it's going to get those people who might not, you know, otherwise be susceptible to an Alex Jones type message, but they see something crazy on the internet and they're like, I'm going to watch this, and then they pass it around to their friends, and it's you know, it's this wow, what you know, and they start talking about it. Hey, you know, we're the guys. My my dad's the one working on the hamster wheel. He's the, you know, and then my mom's a minder. She's always telling people what to do, you know, and then they start seeing the real life examples. Yeah that you had in, in your piece. So with that, we're, we're going to say goodbye, mm -hmm. but we, uh, good luck. Uh, Monday, we're going to announce the finalists. Sure. It'll be about 20, 30, 40. Okay. I'm not sure the exact number. And then, um, you know, in the next coming weeks, leading up to the end of July, we're going to do the third place, second place, and, uh, and grand prize winner. So good luck with that. I'm not involved in all those processes. Uh, I've looked through some films. I've given my two cents, but there's way too many pieces for me to judge, I think Alex is going to be the final judge on this, and he's he's um, you know looking to us to kind of round out a, a giant list of things that he could look at and then pick the winner. But best of luck to you, and even if you don't win, you know you've won by educating people and by putting out you know a really cool piece that that is going to live in infamy on Infowars forever. So. Well, thank you so much, Rob. Nice talking with you. All right. Well, you have a good day. And that was Micah Ellers, who put together the production State of Masochist and the Wheel. Uh, I really think a very original, very imaginative production, and I had no idea he was the minder lady in there. That totally threw me for a loop. That was, uh, did you guys know that? I, I, mean, that was, I was like, well, she's a good actress. You know, she really knows what's going on, and she's got the, the uh, feeling down. Like, she's been thinking about this stuff forever, the way... Very THX 1138, the way, you know, she was being the minder in that piece. And uh, kind of a cross between that and then one of the one of those uh, close-up shots that you see in a Terry Gilliam film of somebody really pu putting their schnoz right into the camera telling you, you're not doing it right, it's this way, you know. That he really had, had he distilled that um, experience down, I, and I, I think it's a great film. I was glad to talk to him. So you can find these and many more on Infowars.com forward slash Paul is where we have, you know, a lot of the entries. This is not by any means all of the entries. And we had a lot of great entries. And if, if yours didn't make it on here, we are going to put a full list together on Prison Planet TV. We're starting to do that right now because we do want everybody to see these. And there will be a link off of uh, Infowars.com forward slash Paul for this. Um, and that doesn't mean you didn't make a good film, and it doesn't mean that wasn't worth anything. We had to do a limited number of films and choices just because of the time constraints. We are, in addition to doing this contest, putting out news every day, working on special reports. We're working on a documentary right now. I should be in the other room actually looking at interviews and, and transcribing them, and, but I'm, I'm here doing this because this is also my job, is, is to get the news out to everybody, especially our members at Prison Planet TV, we do appreciate your support, and if you are watching this on YouTube, please consider becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. It's very easy to do. Uh, you get the daily show, the nightly news, all the movies. Which one of the movies? Click on the movie section real quick. Let's go to that. And um, we have the newest film up there, State of Mind, which is the entire film plus the extras. And also in between that, we have um, the, a roundtable group with the director, the editor, the head writer, Richard Grove, one of the producers, and Alex sitting around talking about different aspects of the film. Very educational, and it almost makes the film that much better. It's like a, sort of a commentary track, but it's broken up in between segments of the film. And with that being said, get your copy on DVD or Blu-ray at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsShop.com. You can get that there. Support the filmmakers. Support us. It helps us to put on things like that. So when we release it on opening day, we put it out for free on YouTube. We think that's how it should be done because it's not about making a bunch of money. It is about getting information out to people. And this film, let me tell you, I sat in there with Marcos last night and we watched the premiere with everybody else. We even had some caramel popcorn. And we, you know, because I never sat down and watched the whole thing. Let me tell you, it is a true masterpiece. These guys really put it together, especially coming off their, their last film, um, A Noble Lie, Oklahoma City bombing that, that took place in the 90s. You know, a lot of people might not even know about that. That's another great film that they have. But State of Mind, this is a great second hit for these guys, a second home run. Get your copy today, make copies, pass them out to other people, have screenings in your area. 
Um, get it. Get your local movie theater to play it. Rent it out one night. Sell tickets. You might even be able to make a little uh, cash off this. Sell some copies. You know, do. You know, get out there and get the word out because it's not the quality of the steps that we take that matters. It's the amount of steps that we take. That's how we're going to change things. Not everything we do is going to be perfect out there, but we have to start doing something. And so I'm doing my something. You get out there and do your something and, and help pick up the, the rope and pull this giant wagon of freedom and, and liberty and that message that we have and that we want to give out to people. Let's get it out there. Let's do it. Let's start making some changes. So we had two great filmmakers tonight, one a very solid documentary and one a kind of an ethereal concept piece, but two both great films. And we have a lot of other great films that you can check out at Infowars.com forward slash Paul. A lot of great stuff. I mean, we're going to be releasing articles on this. We have enough stuff to cover for the next, I think, year. We could be having filmmakers on talking about their stuff. Even if you didn't win, you won by participating and by joining in and by you know, being a, another soldier in the info war, creating your piece of information that's going to live out there on that website for a long time to come. And with that, we will see you tomorrow night. It's the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and be safe out there. Now you can watch the Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show.